on all who desire it, the spirit of grace and of supplication. Deliver us now as we draw near to you from cold hearts and from wandering minds. And now with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections, may we truly worship you today in the season of Easter. May we remember that the Lord is risen indeed. He's coming to us in his risen power to lift our hearts. We pray this prayer in his name. Amen. The hymn number 180, 1st anniversary of our beloved mother Christine Carter on Friday will be her first anniversary of our beloved mother Christine Carter we'll be marking her anniversary in the service today page 1 page 99 sorry page 98 page 98 The seasonal sentence of Easter. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Page 101. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to proclaim and respond to your holy word, 
Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may wordily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Kiri. from page 169 page 169 the third Sunday of Easter oh God whose blessed son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread Open now the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Page 364. Page 364. Let us now turn to page 364. Page 364. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Christine Carter, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, 
you will receive her more and more into your joyful service that with all who have served you in the past, Christine may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. The ministry of the word. The first lesson by Brother Gilbert representing the Anglican Churchmen Association. Anglican Churchmen Society. Acts of the Apostle, the third Sunday of Easter. Peter addressed the people, you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, though by your own power or petty we had made this man walk, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed your author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your fools. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm number four, Psalm number four, found on page 473, page 473. Answer me when I call, O oh God, Defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. 
Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, Oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart. More than when grain and wine and oil increase. Together. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. The second lesson. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A reading from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verse 1 to 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him. For we do know is this, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Let little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn number four. Hymn number four. 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 Not four. Sequence here.
said to them, why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer, to rise from the dead on the third day, that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, this morning I'm pleased to say that for the start of the year, it is now that we're having Brother Run as our preacher. Yesterday was a very busy day for him. He was leading the fire brigade to save a family from a burnt house. And then there were bushfires contending all day. Yet he was able to give us the message last evening and we thank God for his sermon today which will be a blessing to our hearts. As Brother Rand prepares to bring his message, we are going to sing Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on us. And then with our hands outstretched, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on him. Spirit of the living God Spirit of the living God
fall afresh on us. Stretch out your hands. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him. Spirit of the living God, fall Mold him, fill him, use him, use spirit of the living God, fall afresh on him. Lord, be in your heart and your lips as you proclaim the everlasting gospel. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Brother Ron. The psalmist says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. We sing a few choruses. This is the day. This, this is, is the day, day that, that the Lord, Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. I preach you this morning in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Easter. And your families. And today, brothers and sisters, the Gospel of Luke speaks to all of us as believers in Christ. And this Gospel is important because it is the post-resurrection period of Jesus. And here was the most significant and important event in all of human history. And this event of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when he rose from the dead, when he walked out of the tomb, and the tomb was empty, and today he's alive forevermore, and we say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this is the victory that Jesus has won for all of us. And uh, this victory was almost lost on his disciples. Because if we would have noticed in the gospel of last week and the gospel of today, the gospel of last week being John 20, there are many parallels as to what would have happened and occurred 
with the disciples. And here was an opportunity that was almost lost because there's a pattern with the disciples. If you notice throughout many of the Gospels, they are always frightened. They are always in fear. They are always unsure. They are always in doubt. And here again, Jesus appears to them and the first thing he says to his 11, 11 disciples, he says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And not just any peace, but the resurrected peace of Jesus. He says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And however, the disciples' hearts were troubled. They were in fear. They were unsure. And that is why Jesus gives us, like he gives the disciples, that reassuring, comforting words, peace be with you. Because we live in a time, brothers and sisters, when we need God's peace to take full and complete control of our lives. And anything else besides God's peace is no peace at all. Because we as human beings cannot give peace. But that peace that comes from God that defiles human understanding is the peace that we need to sustain us in these perilous times in which we live. And an important question this morning for us, brothers and sisters, is if we say that we have God's peace, are we walking in the victory of the resurrected life? Are we walking in the victory of the resurrected life? Paul says, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through who? Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through Jesus Christ. The disciples were in doubt and fear and terror and confusion as to whether Jesus, whose crucifixion they had all witnessed, could have actually returned in a new glorified immortal body unscathed. In fact, scripture says that they thought it was a ghost. <laughs> And here was Jesus appearing to them and he says, touch me and see. Touch my side, my hands. Yes, this is the real thing. I am Jesus, but not with the same mortal body that I, was, that I had before, but I am, I am in a new, resurrected, glorified body. And that is the gift that Jesus gives to each of us as believers in Christ. That when we depart this life, when we depart this life in Christ, we receive a new, resurrected and glorified body. In fact, that's why I love Easter so much. Don't you all love Easter? Yes, that's why we all love Easter. Because Jesus' death certificate became our birth certificate. Amen. Amen? Amen. Jesus' death certificate became our birth certificate. Because now we have new and unending life. And we say glory, hallelujah. And as we often sing in that great Easter hymn, hymn 172, and I'll find it for you. We often sing in this great Easter hymn of victory, of power, of might. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah. Jesus Christ is risen today, hallelujah. Oh, triumphant holy day, Hallelujah, suffer to redeem. 
Song of victory. Amen? That's why Easter we don't sing any boring songs. Anything to put people to sleep. We sing songs of victory, of power. Amen. Because we sing because of the risen Christ. The son of the living God. The Messiah who is present with us. And because we are alive in Christ, we have been certified with new and unending life. And the revelation says, no more sickness, no more death, no more sorrow. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, thy victory. Our Easter journey, dear for brothers and sisters, is a journey of faith. For none of us present here today have seen Christ. Has anybody seen Christ? No, none of us have seen Christ. Yet, we profess in the creeds that we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And Jesus says to Thomas last week, as he says to us today, do you believe me because you have seen? And he asked the question, he said, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believed. And that is our faith. For were there no resurrection, our preaching would be in vain. Our prayers will be in vain. There will be no need for services on a Sunday. But because of the resurrection power of Jesus, we have newness of life. And there will be difficulties as the disciples experience. There will be fears. There will be family problems. There will be pandemic. There will be sickness. There will be Volcanic eruptions in St. Vincent and wherever else. But Jesus says, I am here with you. I am with you always. So you have no reason to fear. Remember the story of when Jesus calmed the storm in the book of Mark chapter 4? When Jesus told his disciples, he says, let us go on the other side in the boat and he said okay and they picked him up just as he was and they carried him they were carrying him to the other side and a great windstorm arose and the boat was swamped with water and they were all terrified and Peter asked he said do you not care that we perish and Jesus who was asleep in the stern of the boat took his time calm as always, got up, the stern being the back of the boat, he got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the seas, peace be still. And there was a dead calm. And again, he asked the question, why were you afraid? Why do you doubt? You see, when we're walking in victory in Christ, we have no reason to be afraid. We have no reason to doubt. Sometimes we may have our last $20 and we want to put it in the collection, but we're afraid. I say, put it. If you need passage, come to me. Don't be afraid. Whatever you have, Put it, give it to God, just as you are. Because the hymn writer says, just as I am, without one plea. But that thy blood, the resurrected blood, was shed for me. And that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. We will all walk on that Imam Imus road. That road of loneliness. That road where we are afraid. That road where we are unsure, just like the two disciples, Cleophas and the other unnamed disciple, they were walking on the Imamus road. And they were fearful. They were talking about the events that just happened when, with Jesus and his passion and his resurrection. And little did they know that Jesus was right there in the midst of them. 
And Jesus is right here in the midst of us, in our own trials, in our own tribulations, when we go through those difficult times, when we feel alone, just know that Jesus is present with us. Amen. And we have no reason to be afraid. In fact, the psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. So this is the blessed assurance that we have each day, brothers and sisters. For we are Easter people called into his presence to witness these great and marvelous things. Because he says in verse 48, you are witnesses of these things. You are what? You are witnesses. You and I, each of us, you are witnesses of these things. And as a witness, what are we to do? As witnesses, we are to share this wonderful news of the resurrection. We have to share it and not keep it to ourselves. We are not to hoard it for our own building up. Because what is the sense that God gives us a gift and we only keep it to ourselves? Does that make any sense? No. We are to share it with each other. We are to share it with our neighbors. We are to share it with family members. Bring a family member to church who has not come to church, who has never come to church. Bring a friend, bring a neighbor, because we have to share this good news. The gospel does not live or does not exist or cannot exist in a cocoon. Jesus could not be contained in the tomb. And when he arose and came out, he shared himself and his resurrection life with all of us. So that today, we have new and abundant life. Because that is why he came. That was his mission. His mission was he came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. But enlightened by the Holy Spirit, in this process of sharing, we have to do three things. The treaties, we call them, as people of God. The treaties. We are to tend to the flock. We are to teach. Right? We are to tend, we are to teach, and we are to tell. When Jesus appeared to the disciples in the gospel this morning, the first thing they were doing, they were telling of what had transpired. And we too, as disciples of Christ, are to tend, teach, and tell. Because we are, what? Witnesses. And we are not just to tell, teach, and tend. And I often hear Father Errol say at a certain time in the service, um, I think it's for the Lord's Prayer. Right? As our Savior has taught us, so we pray with boldness. So we have to tend teach and tell with with I find out there's something bold eh? with boldness. with boldness because when Peter was able to preach with boldness remember what happened in the Acts of the Apostles on the day of Pentecost when he preached with boldness 3,000 was added to the flock Amen? So when you tell people with boldness, God is working his purposes out. And somebody will be transformed. Somebody will be changed. Somebody will be saved. Because each of us, the hymn writer says, a charge to keep, we have. <coughs> a God to glorify. A never dying soul to save fit for the sky. This is our commission. This is our mandate from God as Christians. 
But sometimes we miss the mark because we don't always focus on Christ as people, but sometimes we focus on the things that make us anxious. Not so? Yes. You have a, a medical procedure to do and you're anxious. You're afraid. You're unsure of what will transpire. Now, I can testify to that. Because sometime last year I had to do a medical procedure. Right? And uh, I went up to Port of Spain, did the test and everything. And the technician said, well, it will take two weeks, Mr. Webb. Pay to get the results. Two weeks. And I want to tell you today, that was the longest two weeks of my life. Right? Because human nature, there was a certain amount of anxiety. Because you don't know what, you know, what the results will come back to say. As Christian as we are, we too have our anxieties. Not so? Yes, we have our concerns, we have our fears, we have our doubts. But in the midst of all that, Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Four, and he reminds us in John 16, 33, I have said this to you so that in me you may find peace. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Amen? Amen. Yes, you will find persecution in the world, but I, Jesus, I have overcome the world. I have conquered the world. I have conquered the flesh and the lust of the flesh. I have conquered the greatest thing that man was afraid of for all his life, death. So what more could Jesus do? Tell me, what more could Jesus do? Who would ever, ever believe that our joy and freedom would come from an empty tomb? And today, Jesus calls us unto himself to empty ourselves. Just as the tomb of those things that hinder his glorious presence in our lives. The pride, the anger, the vengeance. He says, surrender all to me in my grace, in my mercy, in my love. Surrender all to me. Don't bottle it up. Don't keep it inside. That's why we, we pray to God so we could surrender everything. We could lighten our burdens. You see, our lives become burdened because we carry over too many things. Until the next day, until next week, until five years from now, until 20 years from now, we vex with somebody. Right? I read some on Facebook, some very distasteful comments about the death of Minister Franklin Kahn, right? And people were, you know, people were angry because they say he closed down Petra Trin and, you know, and here it is, a man is dead. Can we not have compassion? Can we not have forgiveness in our hearts? Can we not have love and respect for the dead? And this is the kind of society that we live in today, brothers and sisters. People are so unforgiving. People are so filled with vengeance. People are so consumed with anger. You know, I shared this story yesterday, and I'll share it again. I was parked somewhere in San Fernando, and uh, I was about to open my car door, and it almost touched another vehicle that was passing. And the man flew in a rage. Right? And he started to use obscene. And he says, you know, so, so, and so, and so. Language that I didn't want to repeat outside. And uh, so I said, I said, have a blessed day, brother. And he replied, have a blessed day. But he realized, he, you know, he realized, you know, sometimes... The enemy realized that Jesus is trying to make peace, right? By me saying, have a blessed day, sort of, you know, it sort of calmed the situation, right? 
And the man replied, have a blessed day. And then he went back in a rage again. And started to carry on and make noise. I, I walked away. Because it didn't make sense. Right? It just didn't make sense. And he was quarreling all by himself. <laughs> right? And I was probably way down the road already. But I'm just showing you the type of minds that, you know, we have to deal with. But as Christian people, our first reaction, just as Jesus did, is to say what? Is to say what? Peace be with you. Right? Peace be with you. Because if you don't know peace in how to exercise peace in these times, sometimes even in our own homes and our families, you're in trouble. Right? Men, we know that when the wife quarreling, what should we do? I'm talking to the men's society. When the wife is, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, what are we supposed to do? Because you know you're sure if you're, today is what, Sunday? Best lunch is going to Sunday, you know? So we're supposed to say what? Honey, I forget. I'm sorry. Not so? Yes. How many men do that? How many men do that? All right. Anyway, we have more ladies here. So, but the whole idea is to create an environment of peace. Right? The whole idea is to create an environment of peace. And when we start our day, it is easy for the enemy to try to steal our peace. But we have to submit to God's peace and say, not today, Satan. Right? Not today, Satan. Because God is a God of peace. The prophet Isaiah says, and he will be called what? He will be called mighty counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace. So brothers and sisters, as we journey during this time of Easter, let us continue to ask God to give us that spirit of peace in the midst of all that is happening around us. Because we are Easter people of faith. And we walk by faith and not by sight. We didn't have to see Jesus, but we believe that he rose from the dead and he's alive forevermore. And we say hallelujah. We are not afraid. And we have something to do. And God has mandated us to go and treaties, tell me. Treaties. Amen. So as we close, I want us to sing this hymn in the spirit of that, of the treaties. It's, it is hymn number 325. 325. Hymn number 325. And we'll just sing the... Let me see. We'll sing the first verse, the second verse, and the fifth verse. One, two, and five. Amen? And I'll give you the tune. If you don't know it. Go forth and tell... O church of God, awake, God's saving news to all the nations. Take, proclaim Christ Jesus, Savior, Lord, and King, that all the world his worthy praise may sing. Continue. Go forth and tell, God's love embraces all. He will in grace respond to all who call. How shall we call if they have never heard the gracious invitation of his word? Verse 5. Go forth and tell, O church of God, arise. Go in the strength.
strength which Christ your Lord supplied who till all nations his great name adore and serve him Lord and King forevermore go forth and tell the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Amen Let us stand. The Apostles' Creed, the Creed for the Easter season, page 106. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, just before... ...for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice, peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and the glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled and we may pray that we may pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. The end of the reading. Our brothers and sisters, our prayers also go to the, the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Let us remember them. The diocese is sending donation and aid to the diocese and the people of St. Vincent 
and the Grenadines. And I'd like to say quickly, Bishop Raul Duglin is still hospitalized in Port of Spain, and our brother Felipe has spent the whole week carrying Auntie Janice, first taking Bishop to the doctor in Port of Spain and to the hospital, and then this whole week he has been traveling back and forth with Mrs. Duglin, and has spent, has been given his time with the, with the family in this time of hospitalization. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah, our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we've asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Form A. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry. Repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. Keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice. Peace, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. He who does serve Christ is acceptable to God and approved by Abba. The peace, the peace, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share that peace and we sing, let there be peace on earth. Peace, let's share our peace. Announce the offertory hymns, Brother Felipe. The offertory hymn is 
Eucharist this morning, we'll offer this Eucharist in memory of Christine Carter. Families here. Friday will mark the first anniversary since she left, since she departed from us to go and be with the Lord whom she loved and whom she served so faithfully. Page 126. Through your goodness, Lord, we now have this bread and this wine to offer the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. No, Lord, be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God and grace. I'm going to use the preface for commemoration of the dead on page 129. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give you thanks Father Almighty everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of life eternal. For to your faithful people, O oh Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing the same to proclaim the glory of your name. B, page 135. Holy and gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts, and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may now become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. <laughs> 
uh, sorry. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, for the remembrance of me. first acclamation when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim the death of Christ until he comes again. Father calling to mind the death your son endured for our salvation his glorious resurrection and ascension his continual intercession for us in heaven and looking now for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit, become one body in Christ, serve you in unity, constancy, and Peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you. Enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, St. Clement, St. Luke, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. As our Savior has taught us, so we will pray boldly.
We know that you are unable to be with us physically, so we invite you to pray the prayer of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Let me never be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O Almighty God, who has called us to thy service in the fellowship of thy holy church, bless us each day, the Anglican Church Men's Society in all its branches. Make all our members sound in faith and holy in life. Bestow upon us the spirit of prayer and supplication. Grant us by love to serve one another and perfect in us that good work which thou hast begun. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray that thou art one love and keep thy watch around us while we sleep. Oh, let no evil dreams be near, nor phantoms of the night appear, or ghostly enemies restrain, less us in our bodies Almighty Father, hear our cry through Jesus Christ, O Lord, most high, who with the Holy Ghost and thee that live and reign Amen. 
children, please stand where you are. Children, all our children, we thank God for our children. They have entered into the last term of this academic year. They've gone into the last term of this academic year and we pray that they will continue to do well because this is this year, this, this term is their final exams. Some are writing CXC, some are writing SEA. No. SEA? SEA. Some are writing SEA, some are writing CXC and we want to pray for our children. Thank God. Pray for their schools, though they're not there physically. Pray for their teachers. Pray for them to understand more the learning online. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you still have the whole world in your hands. And even in these frightening pandemic times you have not abandoned us you have not left us on our own but the risen Christ is alive the cross is empty and he comes to us every day every moment of our lives to enable us to share in his triumph and in his victory over sin, death, and the grave. We pray for our children. We pray for our children who are in school. We pray for all our children who are standing now. Little babies, toddlers, those who are in school. I ask you to bless them, help them, keep them in the right way. Help them in their studies. Help them not to be discouraged nor frightened, but that you, O oh Lord, is their best friend. And you will help them. If they call upon you, you will answer their prayer. And you will show them, even in the most difficult subjects, you're going to enlarge their understanding, increase their learning, bless their teachers, bless their schools. We pray for the reopening of schools soon that they can all come together again. Bless their parents and their grandparents. We thank you in, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. For the post-communion prayer for... Christine Carter, as this Eucharist was offered this morning in her memory, page 371, page 371. And this is the prayer for the family at the same time. At the same time, this is the prayer for the family, so we'll ask them to stand. Family members could stand, and this will be our prayer for them. And we'll insert our mother's name together. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort in affliction, a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no debt neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with Christine Carter and all your saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen and Amen. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life, and to all of us, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please stand for the doxology.
the Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. You have a blessed week. Be safe and God bless you.